So here we go with chess news for the day. Um, and this is an article, which is, of course, about the recent tournament that happened in, in Sigmund, Tepa Sigmund. After 18 months without classical chess, Peter Savidler wins the Tepa Sigmund. Now, again, as you guys know, there was a certain streamer who didn't play for approximately 837 days, I believe it was. He came back, returned to playing chess, and he won his first tournament. So it's really good to see that um, to see that Peter Savidler, also following the new meta of just not playing chess for a long period of time and then coming back and winning. All right. Let's start the article. It's written by Peter Doggers. On Wednesday, 18 months after playing his last classical chess tournament, Grandmaster Peter Savidler won the 28th. Um, Peter Savidler won the 28th edition of the Tepa Sigmund and Company chess tournament in Malmo, Sweden. The 46-year-old Russian GM drew his final round game, and no tiebreak was needed as GM Boris Gelfon defeated co-leader GM Abamanu Mishra. See what happened. All right. Here we go. Since participating in the 2021 FideChess.com Grand Swiss in Riga, Savidler had only played in online events with one exception, a Chess 960 Fisher Random Tournament in St. Louis last September. In Malmo, his solid plus two score, two wins, five draws, was enough for a clear first place in a mixed field brimming with talent and ambition. At 54, only Boris Gelfand was older than Savidler in this event. The two both absolute top GMs in the early 2000s often had breakfast together in the mornings while bringing a wealth of experience to the table in the afternoons. While Gelfon, a former world championship contender, was having a bad tournament, he ended up helping Sivilar, an eight-time Russian champion, tremendously in the final round. So, once again, you guys, this, this is just how chess goes. Like, we all know each other from playing so many turns over the years. And one day it's going to be the same thing. It'll be like in, in 15 years, it'll be Magus and I eating breakfast together as we try to fend off all these young kids like Gukash, Noderbeck, and um, who is the other one? Gukash, Noderbeck, and, uh, and, and, and uh, all, all, those, all those guys. So let's keep going. Since day four, Savidler had been sharing the lead with Mishra, now 14 years old, but still the youngest grandmaster in the world. The rather strong field in Malmo was a bit of a litmus test for the New Jersey prodigy, who did surprisingly well and only lost in the final round in the clash between the youngest and oldest participant. Gelvon played spoiler as he managed to win a theoretically drawn queen endgame after 125 moves. This way, the tournament did not get to see a tiebreak, and Savidler won the title in his first attempt. Okay. There's some pictures. Let's keep going. The tournament, held since 1993, has had winners with illustrious names. GM Victor Korchnoit, Judith Polgar, Vasily Ivanchik, Jan Tim, and Nigel Short, and Anish Giri, to name a few. In the early years, it was always a 10-year, 10-player round robin, but it shrank to just six players in 2014 and 2017, with no additions in between. The main sponsor was always Johann Sigmund's law firm, but since a few years ago, the dental products products producer Tepa has strongly supported the tournament which has now grown back to eight players Joel Eklund chairman of the board at Tepa is a chess lover with a 2252 rating who visited the tournament daily to enjoy the commentary by Jim Stellan Brunel a four-time participant and Erwin Lamy who played himself once all right as said, the field of players was particularly interesting this year because of the many young talents. Besides Mishra, there were also GMs D. Gukesh, 16 years old, Vincent Kamer, 18 years old, Arjun Aragaisi, 19. Two players were in their 20s, Jorn Van Forest, 24, and Niels Grandalicious, 29, the only Swedish participant this year. Gukesh had shown impressive progress at the WR Masters in Dusseldorf in February, scoring 6.5 out of 9 in an even stronger field. After a two and a half out of three start in Malmo, he seemed the main contender for the tournament victory, but then it went wrong in the fourth round. He lost against his compatriot, a fascinating game that's analyzed by Raphael Letao. All right. Gukes tried hard for more, but he could only score half points in each of the remaining three rounds. In a tournament where just about anyone could beat anyone, Savidler's plus two ended up being a winning score. He defeated Gelfon in the second round and Aragaisi in the third. In the latter game, the Indian GM sacrificed an exchange in the opening, just as GM Fabiano Caruana had done against Savidler. After the game, Caruana contacted Savidler on Discord to ask what happened, because how it went, Aragaisi could have reached the same position, but with an extra tempo. Without that tempo, Caruana still drew comfortably, but Aragaisi played it worse and lost. Okay, so let's keep going. 
Before his loss to Gelfont, Mishra had drawn four games and beaten Van Force and Kamer. It will be interesting to see how the career of the youngest ever Grandmaster will transpire. One thing is clear, he works hard on his game. After every round when he had finished analyzing with his opponent, he and his father would take one of the chess sets from the analysis area to their hotel room to go through the game together one more time, a tradition from his earliest tournaments. At the board, Mishra often takes a pose preferred only by the youngest very youngest proponents of the game, taking off his shoes and folding his legs to sit on his feet. At the same time, his chessable sponsor jacket, as well as mature moves on the board, make him appear as a seasoned player. Now, obviously, as everybody can notice, Mishra here is trying to emulate a certain clown, a certain streamer, who does the whole look up at the sky thing. So, very clearly, Mishra is taking his cues from, from, that, from that Hikaru guy um, with the whole, like, sky look. He's looking up the ceiling to, to look at Stockfish, obviously. Um, nonetheless, joking aside, very good to see, see Mishra have a good result here. Um, and it's, it's all good. Okay. His win against Kamer involves some luck. Little bro thinks he is Hikaru. Yeah. His, his win against Kamer involves some luck. Didn't see the same thing apparently. Well, everybody does it. Everybody looks somewhere to visualize the board. That's just how it goes. Um, so his win against Kamer in, in, involves some luck as a German player had its worst moments in the tournament in terms of calculation. After spending 10 minutes on the clock, he put his rook on the wrong square. All right. The Dutch author of this report was obviously rooting for Jordan Van Forest, who ended on a mildly disappointing 50%. During the rounds, his second GM, Sipka Ernst, was spending a lot of time in the commentary room, suggesting many ideas to Brunel and Lamy. In the fifth round, Van Forest seemed to be spoiling a promising double rook endgame as Eric Gaisi was defending stubbornly. When I noticed the moment when White could trade the remaining rooks, I asked Ernst, but what about the pawn ending? After a five-second calculation, he replied, no, that's a draw. But luckily, Van Forest had more than five seconds left on his clock as he swapped all the rooks and demonstrated it was a win after all. Okay, so here's here, here's the standing. Seviller wins with four and a half. Mishra, Gukesh, and Grandilius on four. You have Van Forest on three and a half. Eric Gaisi on three. Gelfon and Kamer on two and a half. So... Not the best result, of course, but nonetheless, of course, the big star at the end of the day, obviously Peter Savidler from Russia, who shows that at the end of the day, it pays to not play chess. It's more important to not play so that when you can take your 18 months off, take your two years off, whatever that amount of time might be, you take that break, you come back and you dominate. So really, really good um, to see Peter starting the new meta, or not starting, but, but following the new meta that I created a couple of years ago, where you just take a lot of time off, and then you come back strong after a year and a half, two years or longer. However, having said that, there is, of course, um, a bigger historical precedent, which is way back, I think, in the late 60s, Bobby Fischer, I don't remember how long he took off, but Bobby Fischer did not play for a period of time, and then he came back and dominated leading into the 1972 match. It might have been around like 1969 to 1970, but I think Fischer did not play for a year. And then he came back and he just crushed everybody. So there is something to this that if you get to a certain point, taking a big break is a good thing. If you can afford to take a break, um, you know, and, and everything depends. But nonetheless, great to see Peter winning. Obviously, it's it's fantastic news and couldn't happen to anybody better. Really, really nice guys. So good stuff for Peter. All right. I didn't play over the board since 2020. My FIDE rating is 1591. It'll be like your rating will go to like 2000. Mark my words.